Welcome back to Foe on the Fights. Uh, just got done watching UFC Fight Night. Dos Anjos versus Fiziev. And it was a pretty decent card. Nothing crazy, crazy. But, uh, yeah, it was good. And we're going to get right into it because I'm very tired. And it's past midnight and uh, bedtime coming right after this. So, uh Mike Bisping and uh, Brendan Fitzgerald are the commentators. I love Mike Bisping. Uh, BYM podcast is great. You should check that out if you haven't. And him and Brit, him and Fitzy seem to have a good dynamic when working together. But DC and Anik are equally good. Paul Felder and Dominic Cruz are also good, but uh, they're probably my least favorite. Uh, for no particular reason other than Paul says weird stuff sometimes and Dom is kind of a dickhead. But he's super analytical and he ex goes into really good detail about the finer details of the fight. But anyway, uh, and Megan Olivi and Laura Senko weren't in there. Um, what's up with that? They had some new chick named Charlie Artlin or something like that. And she kind of looked like a news reporter with plastic surgery. I mean, I don't know what they're doing. Laura Senko is a gorgeous, beautiful woman. Let her be the goddamn uh, uh, broadcaster. But anyway, let's get into it. I, w I had five and four. I went five and four. Terrible, right? Fucking terrible. But two of those could easily went the other way. Uh, Antonina Shevchenko, in my opinion, lost to... Uh, Courtney Casey and I think Michael Johnson won against Jamie Malarkey but they were super close great fights for both fighters except for that Shevchenko one I, I don't think she did enough she uh, yeah anyway but let's start off number one <coughs> excuse me sorry about that Ronnie Lawrence let's get into it Saeed Nurmag or Ronnie Lawrence versus Saeed Karkamanov. Kakramanov. Got this one wrong. Saeed absolutely destroyed Ronnie Lawrence. I should have done my research on the guy. Because he might be a legitimate threat in the 135 pound division. 10 minutes of control time. 10 takedowns landed. I was rooting for Ronnie the whole time to find a way. But he just couldn't seem to shift the momentum. And was caught in one-way traffic. Impressive win from Saeed. And hopefully Ronnie comes back stronger. Because he really does have an inspiring backstory. Hasn't seen his father since he was age 8. And his mother committed suicide at age 17. Which was when he started his MMA training. What a great backstory that is. Uh, it's inspiring. And the guy's the heat for a reason. So yeah, he, he got a setback tonight, got dominated for three rounds and had no success at all. He landed like one or two good shots and that's it. And got dominated. His eye was swollen. It was bad. But yeah, Saeed seemingly is the real deal and worth keeping an eye on in the future. So next up, we had Kennedy and Zechiku versus Carl Roberson. I picked Kennedy to win. Kennedy won. Carl looked dangerous at times in this fight, but Kennedy proved to be the better all-around mixed martial artist. Most expected, he would probably use his 9-inch reach advantage and his height. He's 6'5". Dude's a massive for the weight class. But um, uh, instead, Nzechiku showed an added layer to his game, landing multiple takedowns, threatening rear naked chokes, even tried a head and arm choke, but couldn't. Um, find the space to finish it he had the cage on his left side which is the side he needed to hop over to to really uh, cinch that one in uh, Carl was super frustrated but it was similar to the first fight in one way traffic for Kennedy in the third round after not being able to seal the rear naked choke he was threatening the whole fight multiple times almost looked like he wanted to do a neck crank and he probably would have had better success going with a neck crank. crank. Um, but yeah, in the third round, uh, he took advice from his coach, his head coach, Safe Saeed, to start using some elbows. And as soon as he started unleashing the elbows, it was all over in a matter of seconds. 
Great performance from Kennedy and Zechikulu. Looking forward to seeing him fight again. Dude's a monster. The African Savage, his name is. And then we had in the next fight a fill in fight. This was uh Obama. It says Obama here, but I know that's not the guy's name. Jesus. Autocorrect. Oh Nama. There it is. I got it once right in the review. I didn't pick for this one because it was a last minute replacement, I think, of uh Nina and um Calvillo's fallout. Nina supposedly had stomach something, but we saw a last minute fill in with Onama versus Garrett Armfield. This one was pretty competitive. Good back and forth action. Onama had the size advantage and power advantage clearly, but Armfield showed some uh some good fight instincts, slipping a lot of shots and countering at times. Good back and forth momentum shift seemed pretty evenly matched up until Obama Oma, Onama cinched up ahead and arm choke. And he did pass over to the left side. And Armfield was forced to go to sleep after a decent attempt to fight back. James Kraus in the corner. And he was busy tonight. And his fighter, Carl Roberson, got dominated. And then his other fighter, Onama, dominated his guy. Not dominated, but he got the win with the head and arm choke. So that was cool. Uh, dude has such a deep roster of fighters. I don't know how he does it, James Kraus. I mean... Every fight card, he's got multiple fighters on there. And then, okay, moving on to Antonina Shevchenko versus Courtney Casey. I picked Courtney Casey. In my opinion, I think she won. Um, uh, she was the aggressor. She was moving forward, and Shevchenko was staying on the outside, counter shot, counter picking, and she threw very minimum. Uh, shots with her hands like super low volume of punches but she did land a ton of kicks with that front kick she's she's good she throws it almost like an axe kick at times but yeah she's just not she's not as good as Valentina whatsoever she's kind of low-key bad though she does have like a I can't talk because I got crooked ass teeth but She's got like a beaver like thing. Even with her mouthpiece in it, looks like she's got like a beaver teeth, bugs funny or something. Not important. So yeah, that one was disappointing because I I thought Courtney Casey cast iron Courtney cast iron Casey had done enough. She um she landed the right hands, the southpaw killer, and she got some takedowns and and yeah, I, I just think she. She wanted it more. She showed she wanted it more. She fought hard, harder. Even though technically Antonino got landed more in the first and second round, I think um, I think she did enough in the third to steal it. But who am I? I'm not a judge. I never will be. Anyway, moving on. Got that one wrong. Next one: Cody Brundage versus Trey Sean Gore. Um, I must have forgot to write my review for this one. Oh, Brundage with the knockout of Trajan Gore. Not much to say there other than Gore should be in Bellator, as I said in my picks video. I'm not hating on the guy. I just don't think he is UFC material. He's still green, though, at 4-2 and two now. I think he's f he's lost twice in the UFC. So we'll see if they decide to keep him. The kid's got potential. He's 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 athletic. He's powerful, but I just don't think he's got the uh, instincts of a fighter. And Cody Brundage showed that he does, and he put him out with he didn't put him out. He put him down with a right hand, timed it perfectly, checked a leg kick, and Trayshawn has his habit he noticed of keeping his head right there after a leg kick, not really setting it up, uh, being careful. And he made him pay, set him down, hopped on top of him, hit him with a few shots. Trayshawn went out, ref stopped it. I got that one right. I picked Cody Brundage. And this next one is f really pains me. I picked Michael Johnson. It was a really good fight, man. Um, Michael Johnson still got 
he's still got uh he still got skills at, at his age. The guy's twenty one and eighteen. I mean, that's a lot of fights, man. And hats off to both guys because it was a hard fought fight. Both guys threw everything they fucking could. Johnson looked really good. Both had great moments. Both dropped their man at least once. I think probably more times. I think Johnson did enough to win, but the judges gave it to Jamie. Props to Jamie for giving props to Michael Johnson. He landed good head kicks and had the forward pressure. Though I have some bias for uh, Michael Johnson. He's such a veteran. I wanted to see him win. (coughs) But he got cocky, man. Like, just immediately gave me flashbacks of Justin Gaethje when he landed a shot on Justin Gaethje and started going like this or mm-mm, mm-mm. like nah man don't do that don't get cocky just stay focused but yeah once he once he he dropped him in the first round almost got him out of there and then uh Jamie threw a couple of shots and Mikey Michael kept going like, no, nah, that didn't hurt me. And that's when I was like, no, man, you're fucking up right now. You're getting too cocky. And he paid for it right after, like a couple seconds after he started acting cocky. He almost got finished his damn self. Hats off to him, though. He survived and fought a great fight. Took a lot of damage. Dealt a lot of damage to Malarkey, too. And uh, almost had him finished there again. Or maybe that was in the first round, the one I was talking about earlier. Yeah, when he dropped him. Malarkey was down on, on the floor, just holding on to his gloves, like trying to get himself together. So, yeah, we got that one wrong. I picked Michael Johnson. He lost. And then next we had Eamon Zahabi. Oh, my goodness. Win, lose, win, lose, win, lose. No, it's lose, win, lose, win. Lose, win. Lose, win. Win, win. And that's that's all. But back to Eamon Zahabi. With a very measured, composed approach against the wild man, Ricky Tercios, who seemed to make more noise than strikes he landed. And his coaches were so fucking annoying. Every time Zahabi would connect with a punch, uh, Tercios' corner would say, would yell, yeah, way to make a miss. Way to make a miss. Like, shut the fuck up. He clearly wasn't missing. And you're not going to sway the judges. Like, they see what's happening. Just because you said, good job making a miss about a hundred times during the fight. Doesn't change that he got his ass, you know, beat. Zahabi. Uh, I mean, Zahabi could have slept Ricky. And Ricky's coaches would have cheered him on saying, way to make a miss. <laughs> As, like, a programmed every strike, they, they praised Ricky saying, great job. Great job. Great job, Ricky. Way to make a miss. But, Zah- yeah, Zaham- Zahabi landed the harder shots throughout. Stayed composed. Stayed defensively sound. And got the win. And GSP was in the crowd. I noticed him earlier, and I, now I know why. There to support Eamon Zahabi, his coach for Zahabi's brother. Moving on to the heavyweights. I picked Jared Vandera. This was a close fight. Um... Jared and Chase threw threw down freaking hard, man. Jared ate so many shots, I found myself surprised halfway through round number two. I was like thinking this was the last round. Chase had clean boxing, landed often, and showed decent movement and head movement. Jared stayed in there, landing his strikes too, with occasional heavy ones landing, evening the tides. But Chase had an extra umph in the third round and went for the kill. And, uh... Might have been stopped a little late by Mark Smith, but I doubt Jared was complaining. I picked Jared Vandera to win, but I was happy to see Chase get the win because he really needed it coming off four straight losses. I'd like to see him work hard and and keep keep this W into a streak. Turn this W into a streak. And then we had Douglas Day... Douglas Silva de Andrade versus Saeed Nurmagomedov. It was a pretty good fight. Uh, I wasn't familiar with Saeed beforehand, but I'm sure to recognize the name in the future. Typically, we expect a Dagestan native fighter with the last name Nurmagomedov to be a heavily grappler, similar to 
Khabib and Um similar to Khabib, but he's not. He's more like Umar. Said showed his prowess on the feet with beautiful question mark kicks, an array of plethora of different kicks, and he loves to spin, which almost cost him dearly at one point. D Silva took advantage of one spin, and he timed it and took him down. And Silva fought valiantly. The guy's uh, so humble, such a genuinely nice guy. You can tell, even though he can't speak good English, his body language says it all. His character. Dude's a good guy, and he's fucking built like an action figure. It's ridiculous. Um, he had some decent moments. He dropped Saeed at one point, but uh, he never gave up on himself, swinging hard to the final bell. I mean, the last five seconds, he threw a spinning back fist. That <laughs> made him lose balance and fall to the ground. It was pretty funny, but... I mean, it wasn't funny. It was, just, it was pretty badass. But yeah, good fight by both men. And then the main event, oh my god, pretty boring main event, co-main event, sorry, I said main event. I'm tired, I'm almost done. Pretty boring co-main event, Kyle Borralio pretty much dominated in the most boring way possible. And being a guy with free spirit tattooed on his neck and fight or die on his arm... I uh, second Bisping's point that he would have liked to see more sense of urgency out of Cal. Um, he definitely didn't live up to the reputation of a wild finisher that he had previously begun to create. But to his credit, he fought safe and showed decent MMA game. But by the third round, he was absolutely gassed. They were holding each other for a bit. And you could tell Petrosian was frustrated he tried to rally at the end, but just too little too late. And when it was over, Cal dropped to the fucking ground in just complete exhaustion. And then, oh, I got that one right. Sorry. Picked Cal for the win. And he got the win. And I got Saeed right. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. He uh, he beat Douglas De Silva. And Kyle, and then the main event, Rafael Dos Anjos versus Rafael Fiziev. This was, it was like pretty boring up to round four is where it really started to turn into a good fight. Um, Fiziev is a, he's a nasty striker, man. The guy on the feet is dangerous. He's got power. His timing is great. He's not unhittable, but his defense is pretty sound, too. Great head movement. Um, just a tricky guy on the feet. And his takedown defense was near perfect. I think it was like 10 of 11, 91% takedown defense. At least that's what it was when they pulled the stats up throughout the fight. But, yeah, I felt so bad for Rafael Desanos. I picked Fiziev to win. But my heart was rooting for Rafael Dos Anjos to win, even so, because I'm a big fan of him. But yeah, I just think uh, the youth and the the hunger and the fucking physicality on Fiziev was just too much for him, man. He tried so hard to get it to the ground, and he just couldn't do it. And um, and he had his moments as well. Dos Anjos did. Landed a pretty decent flying knee. Busy have landed one too though, and um, a couple good right, left hands because uh, Dosanos is a southpaw. But yeah, it looked like, man, it sucks because it looked like Fiziev was fatiguing after round four, and uh, Dosanos' corner was like telling him, "This is it. Empty the tank. Go after him. He's tired. You gotta just go for broke here. Empty the tank." And uh, and you could tell Dos Anjos was like, he was he caught a second wind. He was ready to go out there and do work. But Fiziev must have sensed it because he just came out and threw this combination that was so surprising and so fast and powerful. He, he just caught a Rafael, off, Rafael Dos Anjos off guard. Sat him down hard, almost knocked him out cold with the, I think it was a left hand, maybe right. I forget. I just watched. Sorry, I'm tired. 
but then he followed him to the ground, hit him with a good right hand. Yeah, I think it was a left that dropped him, then he followed up with a right. And uh, Mark Smith saved Rafael Dos Anjos. I agreed with Bisping right off the get-go. It looked like an early stoppage. Um, but then afterwards, when it showed Rafael sitting on the ground, he looked kind of uh, confused, like he was still out of it. So it was probably for the best. But I'm going to go to bed, guys. That was the predictions review wrap-up show. I know I don't need proof because there's nothing to brag about going five and four. Oh, six and four, actually. Sorry. Update. I guess it took them a second to update the co- the main event t- tally. Six and four. Ronnie Lawrence wrong. Zechiku right. Um, Courtney Casey wrong. Let's see. Cody Brundage right. Uh, Michael Johnson wrong. Zahabi right. Um, Jared Brindero wrong. Saeed Nurmagomedov right. Um, Kyle Barallo right. And Rafael Fiziev, right. And how many strikes were landed in the main event? I said 224. And it's not telling me. Sorry. No bonus for this one, guys. It's not letting me know how many were landed. Okay, that's it. That's Fall in the Fights. Thanks for watching if you have... And leave your thoughts on the card below. And have a great night.